Ava, what are you making? Nothing, Apple. What is that? Nothing. Is that pasta? The Apple, it's a pasta. I've never seen pasta like that. It's a secret pasta, Apple. A secret pasta? Si. Can you share the secret with me? Si, Alper, but you shouldn't tell anyone in Italy that I'm uh, showing you this. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. What I'm going to do now is a semolina fresh pasta, which means a pasta made with a semolina flour and water. So this is not an egg fresh pasta. I'm going to make about two servings of pasta, which means 200 grams of semolina flour plus 100 grams of water. step to make this pasta is to roll our pasta dough into a sort of snake. And to give the shape to this, to this pasta we need eight fingers. So once your pasta is a thin snake, like this one, with your four fingers, you do like that. And because there, is, uh, there are eight small holes here, this will keep all our sauce. Can I try it? Like this? Si. I feel like I'm a kid again, rolling out Play-Doh. You have Play-Doh in Italy? Uh, I assume that is what we call a plastilina, the dough. Yes, we have it. So, Harper, be sure that the thickness of the very thin snake mm -hmm. is all the same. So like this? See? that okay? Uh, but doing like that, Harper, pressing too much just one on a side like this, you will have this part that will cook, uh, will need much more uh, longer to cook, uh, and this uh, less. All right, let me try again. Don't give up. Never. Here we are. Is that better? Let's see. They sort of remind me of like dry bean pods. What? You know, like, like beans, different kinds of like beans ah, and peas will come in pods. La buccia dei fagioli. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're yeah, right. Before Ava shows me, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Thrive. When our bodies don't have enough good bacteria, bad bacteria fills the void. One in five Americans are dealing with gut health issues related to their diet. It can cause symptoms like trouble concentrating, bloating, abdominal pain, skin blemishes. If you experience any of these symptoms, or if you're just curious how healthy your gut is, then you should check out Thrive. They offer an at-home test it's real simple to use. You just collect a sample, stick it in the mail, send it right to them, and they'll analyze the results. They'll create a custom report telling you how your gut's doing, what sort of foods you should avoid, what sort of foods you should eat more of, and they'll even develop a custom probiotic for you. 
Over the past few years, Ava has had some digestive issues that were getting worse and they were getting really serious. Every time she ate certain foods, her belly would bloat. It was insane. It looks like she's pregnant. The foods included onion, tomatoes, cheese, wheat of all kinds, so pasta. Ava took a Thrive test. She got her results and she ordered the probiotics. And I'm, I'm not just saying this, it was like magic. The problem went away. She can eat tomatoes again. She can eat pasta again. Obviously she's thrilled. I'm thrilled too, because really a happy wife, happy life. You know what I mean? If you wanna take your own gut health test, then visit the link in the description below. That's trythrive.com slash pastagrammar, and you will get 70% off your own at-home test. Check out Thrive, and a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video and for letting Ava eat tomatoes again. You know how I know I'm gonna like this pasta? Mm hmm Cause it's thick. I know that you love thick pasta. <laughs> I love a really thick. The bite. Yeah, yeah, you bite into it. It's got, as Dan Pashman from Cascatelli would say, tooth sinkability. <laughs> and they, this for sure they have this characteristic. I'm pretty sure it's going to. What is it? This is uh, gnoccoli cavati. Which means, uh, cavati means with the hole, like this. Uh, gnocchi is the name of this pasta. It's traditional from uh, Trapani, from Sicily. And we season it with uh, a sort of sauce in between, what in Sicily they call amoggio, and the pesto alla trapanese. It's very easy to make, too. It's very easy to make, it's very, very fast. Also the, the sauce at the end, everything is completely raw except for the pasta. Bon, bon appetito. appetito. Oh yeah, tooth sinkability galore. Also it tastes <laughs> It tastes really good. So yeah, I've never seen this pasta sold. Can you even buy this in Italy? If you can buy it, but I have several doubts. You can buy just in Trapani because it's very specific from that part of Italy. So for example, in Rome, you don't find it. In uh, Torino, Calabria, Milano, no. So in order to have this pasta, you need to go there or make your own. It's definitely worth making on your own because because it's delicious, it's very good. It's like my perfect kind of pasta. <laughs> I love this so, so much. I don't know why, but I have the feeling that the next pasta dish will be his favorite. Our next secret pasta is an egg fresh pasta, but I'm not going to use just all-purpose flour and eggs. But I will put inside also some buckwheat flour and some butter. After we rolled our pasta, what we are going to do is give a shape to our dough. And this time uh, we don't need a real uh, shape. I mean, it's uh, a sort of what we call in Italy mal tagliati, which means uh, bad cutted. So you cut the pasta in a triangles, but don't worry if it's not perfect, because it shouldn't be perfect. So you're just kind of doing random triangular shapes? Mm-hmm. Okay, my turn. Please, it's so difficult, Harper. I guess there's probably no wrong way to do this, huh? Absolutely not.
Aw, you're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> I have all the necessary skills. I know what a triangle roughly looks like. I know how to hold a knife. first made just the pasta, I thought, this is a crazy pasta. The sauce is even crazier. Butter and cornmeal. Uh, butter and uh, cornmeal, yes, corn flour. And uh, this is a pasta, the name is uh, Biechi. Biechi. Biechi? Yes. Or they call also Blacks. And it's a pasta that it's from Friuli Venezia Giulia. So we are at the top of Italy. And it's the seasonal do it uh, corn flour because uh, up there they eat a lot of polenta. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the only thing that I would like to ask uh, sorry to, how do you say? Forgiveness? Ah. Ask forgiveness to my friend from Friuli Venezia Giulia. I couldn't find the right cheese, which is the Montasio, so I had to use the Parmigiano. Please forgive me if some of our friends can find, it's so lucky that can find the Montasio, please use it. They might still be mad at you for revealing their secrets. Or maybe they are happy because finally someone uh, give credit to their food that is amazing. I really have. No idea what to expect the taste to be like. Buon appetito! Buon appetito! Wow! Wow! It's too good. Because you have the butter and the, I realize it's not the right cheese, but the parmigiano. So I'm kind of getting like, a, it reminds me of the, the real fettuccine al Alfredo, mm -hmm. but the buckwheat flour and the cornmeal give it a really strong flavor underneath that. It's so good. It's amazing. It's so good. He is going to say that this is his favorite dish of pasta. Well, before I was talking about just the pasta itself, this as a dish is incredible though. Definitely more people should eat this. This is a dish that, uh, for what I know, it's also very difficult to find in the normal restaurant. In, uh, in Italy? In Italy, in Friuli Venezia Giulia. So very few restaurants keep doing uh, this because it was a very poor dish. Mm -hmm. Think that they used bakwe flour when they didn't have enough flour. So they had to mix oh. to having more. But yes. It tastes rich. I'll put it that it way. It does like, not taste uh, like it the poor taste. food of necessity. It and tastes like... No. <laughs> yep, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. These Italian secrets are turning out to be quite delicious. I wouldn't mind another one. I can reveal another one, but this time we were in the deep south. We went up in the deep north. And now we need to go across the sea, the Tyrrhenian Sea. And we need to land uh, in uh, Sardinia. Oh, Sardinia. The often forgotten <laughs> region of Italy. But it's Italy. It's 100% Italian with a wonderful tradition that deserves to be well known in all over the world. The last secret pasta that I'm going to make use a normal semolina flour, but with a secret ingredient. It is the best maybe ingredient that you can have, and it's wine. <music> to 
to make our third secret pasta we need a gnocchi board but we are not going to make gnocchi the first step guys is to roll our pasta in a snake we cut our pasta this size we need a knife we put the pasta here we roll the pasta we close it got my piece here like this right yeah roll it okay and now close it You sure this pasta wouldn't be better if you just rolled it out and cut it into random triangle shapes? Not too easy. Alright. Pasta made with wine. It's like my two favorite food groups. This one I'm super excited about because it smells so good. So what you have in front of you are per they are called spitzulus, if I don't make a mistake, because the Sardinian language is a little bit strange. So they should be spitzulus di Orroli. Orroli is a small town in Sardinia and they do this amazing, wonderful, beautiful pasta. It's very pretty. It's very, very pretty. Nowadays, uh, most of people, they do just with water. But during the past, they made the pasta with the wine. <laughs> We, both of us, we are excited to try <laughs> it. seriously smells so good. The shape is too beautiful. It's cool. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Tastes even better than it smells. Rich and tangy with that salty sausage. And the pasta, it's so cool. It is, yeah. <laughs> And the wine in the pasta is doing something because yes, there was some wine in the sauce, but not a lot and no, just a not an amount that I would have thought would create such a bold wine flavor. It's really good though. But in the pasta. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of surprised it isn't more common to see just sold because it looks very, um, whereas the other pastas were kind of more rustic. You know, they look very homemade. It's not something that a company would like go out and sell. This, they're so like pretty and delicate and nice. Like I'm surprised this hasn't caught on as like you see it in a box at a store all the time because it's a very cool shape. Maybe we can start a business. Maybe we can, maybe we can. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this look at some rare and almost secret pastas from Italy. You can't buy them at the store, but they're very easy to make. And if you try it, please let us know. Tag us on Instagram, at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see what you guys come up with. If you're generally interested in learning how to make your own pasta at home, then check out our guide to homemade pasta. The link will be down in the description below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please don't tell the Italians we revealed their secrets. And we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. What? Alper, a lot of people ask us, what do you do with the food that you cook? <laughs> I eat it. This is what happens to the food we make. <laughs> we eat, guys. We eat all the food that we make. So, Alper, buon appetito. Buon appetito. Mmm.